Okay, we are picking up in Lesson 2.8. I would say it's where we left off. It was just a very brief introduction today, or yesterday. So we're solving these inequalities. And example one is kind of taking, getting us used to the idea of trying to figure out, okay, where does this polynomial equal zero, positive, and negative? And we already did part A, if you recall. Excuse me by finding out where the polynomial equals zero. If you recall, to find where the polynomial equals zero, it was taking each of the factors and setting it equal to zero, right? And we had zeros, or real zeros, at negative three and four, which came from the x plus three and the x minus four. Okay, in order to do B and C, I had you guys setting up what I call a sign chart. And when you go to do homework, 2 through 12 are the ones that I'm going to ask you to use sign charts, okay, that we're going to work these analytically or algebraically, okay. After that, you're going to be able to use the graphs, and so we'll also look at that today, which is why I said have your graphing calculators available. Now, um, we had taken these zeros of negative 3 and 4, and we put them on a number line, right? And what we were trying to do when we left yesterday is figure out each section. So in this section, is it going to be negative or positive? In this section, is it going to be negative or positive? And in this section, is it going to be negative or positive? To the left of negative 3, I said pick a test value, right? I wrote down that we used negative 4. You could have used negative 5, negative 6, whatever. And do you recall how we did this? I took the negative 4, and I plugged it into each factor over here. Negative 4 plus 3 resulted in a... Negative. Negative 4 squared plus 1 results in a positive. And negative 4 minus 4 itself is negative, but when you square it, it becomes positive. And then a negative times a positive times a positive overall is a negative. So what that's saying is that this section to the left of negative 3 the graph is going to be negative, meaning the graph is going to be below my x-axis. Now, we left off right here, and I was ready to test between negative 3 and 4. What's a good value to use between negative 3 and 4? I'm going to use 0. You can use any value between negative 3 and 4 to test it. We'll all get the same results in terms of signs. So if I test with 0... 0 plus 3 is going to result in a positive. 0 squared plus 1 is going to result in a positive. 0 minus 4, quantity squared. And that's going to be a positive. What do you know about a positive times a positive times a positive? It's a positive. So we know that the section of the graph between negative 3 and 4 is going to be positive. It's going to be above the x-axis. And then same thing for this last section. What do you want to use to the right of 4? 5 works for me. You can use any value greater than 4. You don't even really have to think of a certain value, just, you know... So some number bigger than 4 plus 3. Well, so 5 plus 3, positive. 5 squared plus 1, positive. 5 minus 4, positive. And then we squared, it's still positive. What's a positive times a positive times a positive? Positive. And so by setting up this sign chart, we have just set ourselves up to answer parts B and C. So let's write out official answers for B and C. Okay, so A, where's my graph values negative, or zero? And it was zero at our zeros of negative three and four. B is where is this graph positive? So in what intervals is my graph positive? 
using interval notation. Okay? Now, okay, I just turned negative 3 to infinity, virtually. One exception, though. I agree negative 3 to infinity. What's true at 4, though? Yeah, 4, it's not positive at 4 because it equals 0 at the value of 4. Yep, negative 3 to 4 and 4 to infinity. Does that make sense? I am going to use parentheses around these. So I'm going to do parentheses, negative 3 to 4, because, okay, so it just wants to know positive. At negative 3 and at 4, is this graph positive? And no, it's equal to 0. So in this case, since they only want to know positive, I'm going to use parentheses. It's kind of like it's not equal to, it's just greater than. So negative 3 to 4, I'm going to use u for union, and then 4 to infinity. For C, on what interval is my graph negative? It's everything to the left of negative 3, which is, yes, negative infinity to negative 3. Good. Negative infinity always uses parentheses, and negative 3 is parentheses because, again, we're not talking about when does it equal 0. We just want to know when is it negative. Okay? Now, if you think about this, we talked here, okay, so if we visualize this graph, over here to the left of negative 3, my graph is negative, which means my graph is below the x-axis, right? What happens at negative 3? It's a 0, which means my graph is going to, and notice what did we talk about over here? It crosses, right? At x equals negative 3, it crosses. So then what happens between negative 3 and 4? My graph is positive, which means it is above the x-axis. At 4, what's my graph supposed to do at 4? Because it had an even multiplicity, it's touching. So it's going to come from above because it was positive. It's going to touch, and then what's it going to do? Go back up and be positive over here as well. Notice, I haven't picked up my graphing calculator, but I can kind of visualize what it's going to look like just looking at the equation and knowing what we know. Okay, and you can put that into the graphing calculator if you wanted to. We'll have more of those to do, so I'm not going to worry about too much right now. Questions on that one? Okay, let's look at example two here. And example two goes off of what we just talked about there with example one. Um, example two, notice the directions specifically say solving a polynomial inequality analytically or using algebra. When, we, when it says in homework analytically or using algebra, and I'm talking about on 2 through 12, what I'm saying is to use a sign chart. Okay, and I'll mention that. Hopefully I'll have time at the end of the class to mention that, but that's sign chart, and that's what 2 through 12 I'm going to be asking you to do is kind of set it up like this problem here. Now, as we look at example two, what's different about this problem compared to the last problem? Yeah, the last one was already factored out, which was incredibly helpful because if it's already factored out, we know where our zeros are, right? Do we know where our zeros are here? We don't know where our zeros are. How do we find our zeros if we don't know them? Test a while ago, so. Actually, you're right, Hansa. Hansa said synthetic division. Yeah. Because what do we have to do before we can jump into synthetic division? We find our PRRs, potential rational roots. 
Now, and here's what I'll tell you. We're going to use a little bit of a shortcut with the PRRs because on this one, when you start looking at PRRs, there are a whole bunch of them. I'm not going to spend our day trying all these different options and then finding that a whole bunch of them don't work. Okay, we're going to use the graphing calculator to help us get started. But with that in mind, let's start by finding our PRRs. Now, PRRs, factors of what? Factors of 24 over factors of 2. Remember, it's factors of the constant over factors of the lead coefficient. What are factors of 24? One, two, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four, and I like to write them out in order. Because, so one, two, three, four all go in, right? Four and six, so plus or minus six. Three and eight, so plus or minus eight. Two and twelve, one and twenty-four. All over factors of two, one and two, plus or minus one, plus or minus two. Now, um, I said that we're rather than try and go through and guess a whole bunch and try a bunch of failed synthetic division, we're going to use the graphing cap there to give us some guesses, right? I could go through and write out what my PRRs are, and if you're required to, I know you guys can as well. I'm just going to leave it as this for right now, if you don't mind, because you guys know it's what? All of these listed, and then all of these divided by 2. Okay? Graph this, and let's see what the graph suggests we use. So I'm going to graph 2x to the third, minus 7x squared, minus 10x, plus 24. I'm going to zoom 6 because, just because I always do. I don't know if this is showing up virtually or not. Yeah, it looks like you guys can see the graph. Thoughts? What do my zeros look like just by eyeballing? Not by trying to trace, not by trying to find zeros, but just by eyeballing. It's negative 2, 4, and then something between 1 and 5. Okay, so we can confidently say negative 2 and 4. I agree with Sadie. Something between 1 and a 2, 1 and 2. Ethan said maybe 1 and a half. And 3 halves would be one of our PRRs. Here's my thought. I'm pretty confident about my negative 2 and 4. If we try negative 2 and 4 first, do I have to worry about that fraction? No, because it will be given by that point. Does that make sense? So <clears throat> I'm going to say that my graph suggests that I try x equals negative 2, 4. And to be honest, sorry. I'm just going to put question mark. It's negative 2, 4, and question mark. You could put one point question mark if you want. In all honesty, by the time I get to that point, I won't need it. My recommendation is you try negative 2 or 4, right? And all of this is we're trying to get this factored. So let's set up the synthetic division together. Hopefully we're going to be experts at synthetic division by now. Again, start with negative 2 or 4. doesn't matter officially. I'm going to use negative 2. Don't forget to put placeholders if you need them. Got 2, negative 7, negative 10. And 24. Drop your 
2, negative 2 times 2, negative 4. Negative 7 plus negative 4, negative 11. Negative 2 times negative 11, positive 22. Negative 10 plus 22, 12. Negative 2 times 12, negative 24, 24 and negative 24, <clears throat> zero. Let me zoom in on this a little bit so you guys can see better. What do we know now? Z the zero tells me, a remainder of zero tells me that it works. And so we know negative two is a, one of our zeros. What does this, what does this factor represent? Let me rephrase that. What does negative two represent as a factor? Right, but so what factor is it? Yes, x plus two is what I was asking. Sorry. I think I was struggling with how I was asking it, but it wasn't coming through, right? Yeah, so, okay, so what we know, because the whole point of me doing this synthetic division is I'm trying to get this factored out, because I need it in terms of factors to be able to do my sign chart. So since I know negative two works, that means I know there's a factor of x plus two. Okay, we tried negative two, it works. Next we want to try four, unless you want to take a stab with that fraction. But now remember, what do I use with four? Your new equation, two, negative 11, and 12. You need that new one because we're factoring. Drop the 2, 4 times 2 is 8, negative 11 plus 8, negative 3, 4 times negative 3, negative 12, 12 plus negative 12, 0. What do we know? 4 works. What factor does 4 represent? X minus 4. X minus 4. Now, and this is where I said you didn't have to worry about the fraction because... At this point, I have 2 and negative 3 left. What does that 2 and negative 3 represent? Yeah. This represents the factor 2x minus 3. So there's our third factor. If you solve it, what 0 does that give me? Add 3, divide by 2, and that does give you the 0 of 3 halves. Oh, was there a 1 and a half right earlier? It was, but in case it wasn't, we didn't have to guess and stress ourselves out there. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to write our equation in factored form so we can set up a sign chart. Now, my original equation was f of x equals 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 10x plus 24. But now, we factored that, right? That's what our synthetic division did for us. It factored us. What were the three factors? X plus 2. X minus 4. And I'm going to write it as 2X minus 3. I had someone this morning that said X minus 3 halves. Well, officially, that's the same thing. Okay. Okay. I'd rather write it as 2x minus 3, but I get it. So I wrote that factored form. That factored form is what, where we're going to test our values. Now, again, this said to do this analytically or algebraically, right? So I said we're going to set up a sign chart. Now, I skipped over one thing at the top that I should have mentioned. We're doing a sign chart. What, what am I looking for on this sign chart? Well, specifically, okay, so Ethan says positives and negatives. In this particular problem, what do I need, though? If we go back to the original problem here, we want to know where this graph, what, is greater than zero. What does greater than zero mean? Positive. So in this particular graph or problem, because it says greater than zero, my answer is going to be any place that my graph is positive. Okay? If it said less than zero, my answer would be any place the graph is negative. Okay. So, let's 
set up a sign chart here. I think I have room. I know I'm jamming a lot into this little area here, but on your sign chart, put your zeros. Now, you don't have to worry about good spacing, but they do need to be in order, increasing order. So as I put them in increasing order, let's see, what was my smallest? Negative two, three halves, and four. Those are the numbers on my sign chart, so my zeros that we found earlier. That was the whole point of synthetic division, is it gave me the zeros, and it also is going to give me an equation I can plug into. So as I pick test values, I'm going to test them in this factored equation. Okay? Like the previous problem. What is a number that I can test in this first interval? So I need a number to the left of negative 2. Okay? You can use negative 3. You can use whatever number you want over there. You can write it down if you need to. Or you can just know it in your head. What do you know about negative 3 plus 2? That's a negative. Negative 3 minus 4? Negative. 2 times negative 3 minus 3? Negative. So when I plugged my number in, I got three negatives. What's a negative times a negative times a negative? A negative. So this interval is negative. And again, you can write in here, I use negative 3. You might have used a slightly different number, but we should have gotten 3 negatives, which multiplies to be a negative. Okay? Repeat the process between negative 2 and 3 halves. What's a good number to use between negative 2 and 3 halves? I like 0. If you'd rather use negative 1 or positive 1, that's fine. 0 plus 2 is a positive. 0 minus 4 is a negative. 2 times 0 minus 3 is a negative. What's a positive times a negative times a negative? A positive. So we know that interval is positive. Keep going, right? Now I need something between 3 halves and 4. 2 or 3, either or. They both work. They both work out the same if done correctly. So whether you're saying 2 plus 2 or 3 plus 2, you're going to tell me positive. 2 minus 4 or 3 minus 4? Negative. 2 times 2 minus 3? Positive. What's a positive times a negative times a positive? Negative. So this interval is a negative. And to the right of 4? I'm going to use 5. 5 plus 2 is positive. 5 minus 4, positive. 2 times 5 minus 3, positive. And three positives multiply to be a positive. Okay. What was the question that this problem was asking? We were trying to figure out where is my graph greater than zero, which, yes, does mean where is my graph positive? So on what intervals is my graph positive? Negative two to three halves. I disagree with three halves to four. Four to infinity. Okay, so I had a positive here from negative two to three halves. So negative two to three halves. Keep in mind, we just want to know greater than zero. Do we want to know when it equals zero? 
No, just greater than zero, so I'm going to use parentheses. So negative two to three halves, and my other one that's positive is four to infinity. Sorry guys, I ran out of room. <laughs> I used parentheses because it was just asking for greater than. If it said greater than or equal to, then we would talk brackets. But I just used parentheses for the greater than. Now, let me try and make a connection with the graph. We want to know when this graph is positive, yes? You guys told me between negative 2 and 3 halves. What do you notice on the graph between negative 2 and 3 halves? It's above the x-axis, which means my graph is positive. You told me 4 to infinity, so 4 to the right. What do you notice after this graph crosses through 4? It's positive. So that's how you relate it to the calculator, to the graph. Okay, again, 2 through 12, I'm asking you to try sign charts. After that, you can use the graphs. And we're going to talk in the next example about how you can just use the graphs and not the, graph, not the sign charts. Questions at this point? <clears throat> okay, let's get through example three. So if we've gotten through example three, you've seen a graph and a sign chart type problem to know what to do. So example three says to solve the polynomial how? Graphically. So we say graphically, that means you get to use your graphing calculator. You don't have to do synthetic division to find your zeros. You can find your zeros specifically by looking at the calculator. Here's what it also really means. It's not going to necessarily be nice, neat zeros that you could find synthetic division. These are going to be zeros that you couldn't find synthetic division anyways. Okay? So, first of all, Solve x cubed minus 6x squared less than or equal to 2 minus 8x graphically. What has to happen before I can even start this problem? Yeah, we have to get it, I'm going to say quote, equal 0. We have to get 0 on one side, yes? So, easiest thing to do here is to subtract 2 over and add 8x over giving me the inequality, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x minus 2 less than or equal to 0. <clears throat> when all is said and done with the problem, what is it we are being asked? Since this says less than or equal to zero, we're going to want to know where is this graph negative. Or in other words, physically on the graph, where is it below the x-axis? And technically, since it says equal to, I'm going to say on or below the x-axis. So I'm going to write this out over here as a question. Where the graph is negative. That's the question we're being asked because it says less than. Where is the graph negative? So when we look at the graph, we're going to be looking for on or below the x-axis. Now, that's ultimately our final goal. What is it you have to start by doing here? We need to graph it. What is it you're typing into your calculator? It's y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x minus 2. 
Once you get that typed in, what are you going to be looking for? Your zeros. So I'm going to write here, what are your zeros? Okay, so let me type mine in. x to the third minus 6x squared plus 8x minus 2. Are my zeros nice, neat whole numbers this time? Nope. How do we find our zeros that are not nice, neat, whole numbers? <laughs> Second calc. Okay. So make sure you know how to do that. Second calc. Number two is zero. Remember, zeros. We're finding our x-intercepts. So left bound. I'm left of the first x-intercept. Enter. Right bound. I'm right of that x-intercept. Enter. Yes, I just go back to it. My first zero there. Not a nice neat whole number, is it? 0 0.32486913. I'm going to go two decimal places, so approximately 0 0.32. Now find your second one, right? So second, calc, 0. Left bound, so this time I'm above the next x-intercept. Right bound, so I'm below it. And 1.4608111 is what my calculator says. If I go two decimal places, 1.46. One more. Are you practicing these? Do you know how to find them? I hope. Okay, left bound. I'm before my last x-intercept. Right bound. I go past it. 4.2143197. Or approximately 4.21, if you would. Okay. Those are your zeros, right? Those are your breaking points. Those break up your positive and negative intervals. Now, I personally, I'm going to put a sketch here in the, my notes. And it's kind of one of those, like, it can help you if you look back at it later. When I say I'm putting the sketch here, I'm just sketching what my graph looks like. It comes from down below. It goes up. It goes back down. Graph looks something like this according to the calculator, right? The only reason I'm doing this is so that I can have something to point at and circle. Let's see. That farthest right x-intercept is 4.21. This one is 1.46. And that first one was 0 0.32. Okay, so I'm going to zoom into this side of my paper here. The question is, where is my graph negative? Okay. Ooh, we'll talk about that. Okay. So we've got a negative section here, yes, and we have a negative section there. So we have two intervals that are part of our answers. Now, think like a number line, okay? This one is on the graph before you get to point three two. So if it's before we get to point three two, that is the part of negative infinity to 0 0.32, because it's all these x values over here. 
Negative any always uses parentheses. Point three two. What about it this time? Okay, this time it needs a bracket because the question is when is it less than or equal to? So because it says equal to here in the question, we use a bracket. Union. What's this other negative interval? Point four six to four point two one and one point four six and four point two one are also going to use brackets for the same reason. Okay? For the same reasons. Because it said less than or equal to. If it had just said less than and not less than or equal to, we would go back and use the parentheses. Okay, questions there. Okay, time-wise I have a few minutes, but not much. And what I'm going to tell you guys is the same thing I told the morning class. Yes, I want you to go in and try the homework. I realize we may have a few more problems that I'd like tomorrow to talk about. We'll deal with it. But I do want you to go ahead and try the homework. Um, Example four, these problems here, it says solving a polynomial inequality with unusual answers. For instance, if the whole graph is above the x-axis, that means the whole thing is positive. Or if the whole thing is below the x-axis, the whole thing is negative. Those types of unusual answers. Now, I'm going to flip back to the back for a moment, and I just want to, at least briefly look at example five with you. And I know I don't have time to fully work it out, but at least talk about it briefly. Notice it says, solve the following inequalities. Your book might say using a sign chart analytically. We're gonna do it on our calculator. And what I wanna show you here, let me graph it for you real quick. Wrong thing. Five over x plus three plus 3 over x minus 1. What are you seeing on this graph? What are these breaks? Asymptotes. Okay, asymptotes. Now, look at your equation. Where are these asymptotes? There are asymptotes at negative 3 and positive 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's asymptotes at negative 3 and 1. So this particular problem is wanting to know when is my graph less than 0. So when is my graph where? Below the x-axis. So you would have this portion here, which is below the x-axis, right? Which is going to be negative infinity over to, guess what? whatever that asymptote is, which we just talked about that asymptote being at negative 3. And then we have this guy down here that's negative, yes? Well, you'd have to find that x-intercept, which you can do using your calculator, right? X-intercept, I believe, is negative 1 half. So this is going to be negative 1 half to the next asymptote, which is at 1. Okay, these are some of the unusual things you're going to see. Now, how well you're going to do without me going through several of them, I don't know. I'm, I'll cross my fingers and hope it'll work out real well. But if it doesn't, I'll talk about it tomorrow. Negative infinity. Because if it goes off the left side of the graph, that's negative infinity. Now, the homework, and I may go back up and write something down here in a moment, but... The homework is page 242, 2 through 20 evens, and 34 to 44 evens. Now, what's not written on my board here in the class is what I'm going to write right here, is that on 2 through 12, 
I'm going to tell you to use a sign chart. Once you get past 12, I'm going to tell you to graph. So you graph the others. Okay? So 2 through 12, the sign chart. What we were doing there at the beginning. 30, or after that, so it would be what? 14, 16, 18, 20, and then 34 through 44. Look at the graphs. Use your clues, things like asymptotes, things like intercepts to figure it out. And again, I know I'll have to talk about a few more than normal tomorrow, but give it a try. See what you can do with it, okay? Um, we, uh, my plan is to go more through homework questions and not finish the notes. Um, we're done with Chapter 2 at this point, though. If you look at your notes, the next lesson is Lesson 3.1. What'd you say?